Hi everyone, Digital Golf Doc here talking to you today about the scientific way to increase club head speed. Why do I say scientific? Well, because this is data published in the scientific journal about how amateurs increase club head speed. Now there are two ways to do this. The study run by Sasha McKenzie, probably the best biomechanics researcher when it comes to golf, took a bunch of amateurs, tried to find out how they produced speed, and then put it in the paper, validated it so we know we can trust it. Those two ways are increasing the force that you pull down on the club or increasing the total distance from hands to ball. Now, let's break down how both of those work. First, if we're going to increase the force that we pull down on the club, then we're talking about being stronger for the most part. Now, if you get your kinetic sequence in order, you can also add speed. But let's break it down into the three areas of the body. So we're going to talk about legs, we're going to talk about core, and we're going to talk about upper body. So if I go up to the top of my backswing, I need to be able to pull the club down harder to create more club head speed. Now, that does not just happen with your upper body. So if I'm at the top of the swing here and I fire my hips, do you see how firing my hips automatically drops my hands down? That's going to be the one way to increase the speed. The other way is rotation through my core. So if I fire my obliques and my abs, I'm also going to yank down on that club. Now, we can also get it from our upper body. For that, we are just going to yank down with our arms. We're mostly going to feel that happen with our lats. They're probably the biggest contributor as far as the upper body goes in the golf swing. And the more you can add each one of those things to the golf swing, the faster the club, head's gonna, club head is going to move. So the other thing to keep in mind is the sequence of things. So you can think of the kinetic chain. Now I'm going to link another video here about the kinetic chain if you want to learn more about that. But what the kinetic chain says is we have to add things in a certain order to maximize speed. That order is going to be lower, mid, upper. So when I start the downswing, I start it by driving through the ground, creating ground reaction force, getting the hips to move. That adds some speed. The next contraction comes from my obliques and my abs, and that adds more speed. And then finally, I'm yanking down with my arms too. If I can get each of those in order, let's say I add 30 miles an hour from each piece, 30 from my legs, I add 30 from my midsection my core and 30 for my hands I've got 90 miles an hour of speed which can be a great number for a lot of irons driver we want to be higher but you have to get that order the problem is if you sequence your core first you're not going to get that amplification or if you sequence them in correct orders so when we're talking about increasing the force that we pull down in the club we're talking about a measure of strength so Lift some weights, get stronger legs, core, arms, and then put that stuff in the correct order, and you're going to be able to maximize the force that you pull down on the club. Now, the other thing is increasing the hand path. So if you ever think about how you add speed, I would think of it like a sprint. If I give you 20 yards and tell you to sprint, and then we put a speedometer on you, and I measure your max speed, it's going to be lower than if I give you 40 yards because you're going to have more time to pick up speed. You can think of the same way as a car. How can you accelerate zero to 60 in one second all the time? Maybe you need maybe 50 feet. Or what if I gave you double the distance and double the time? You're going to increase speed because you had a longer time to build that speed up. And that's why we talk about increasing the hand pass. So took this band here and if I go to the top of the backswing with this band and this is the top of my backswing I can add speed from here to contact again obviously you get the whole body into it but from here to here is the only place I can add speed but if I go here I can now add speed in that little area that I did not have it before so if I add three miles an hour in this place that I didn't have now I hit the other spots faster I keep amplifying that speed and I get to the contact point, and I'm going to have way more speed because I was able to turn farther. So you look at a guy like Dustin Johnson, he gets these real high hands in the swing, and he gets a lot of his speed from the length of the arc of his swing.
a great thing to do when you're 6'4". You look at someone else, they might develop the force. Um, let's say Rory or, or even Rom, who creates this immense separation from their lower, through, lower body through midsection and upper body. They create a bunch of lag, but they're also strong, and that creates the force that they pull down on the club. Now, every golfer is going to do a little bit more of one versus the other. So the question is, which one should you do? And that's just basically you need to look at your swing. If you have really low swing speed, try and improve both. You'll do great. If you need extra distance and you're already really strong, then you're going to be working on mobility, increasing that length of the um, hand path. Or say you're flexible, you got a lot of mobility. You're a tall, lanky high school kid, but you don't have any strength. Hit the gym, build some strength. You're going to be able to add force that you pull down to the club. Again, these are the top two ways, scientific proven ways, that you add club head speed for an amateur golfer. So, again, this study was done on amateur golfers. That's what it applies to. My guess is I don't have a whole lot of PGA professionals watching this video, although I do know that i got a few college and uh, PGA, LPGA people who might take a look at this. Um, but this is for you amateurs mostly. This is how you increase club head speed by the science. If you have any questions on this, leave them in the comments below. Send me an email, digitalgolfdoc at gmail.com. I'll catch up with you all in the next video.